Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very, very senior professional from Alberta, Canada, Linda Crockett. Linda, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Linda is the CEO and founder of the Canadian Institute of Workplace Bullying Resources. And bullying, as we know, is pretty common all over the world. So, Linda, let's start by asking you the question that what was your motivation to start uh, an institute for bullying? My motivation was like many others. I went through it. Mm -hmm. I went through it. I hit rock bottom when I went through it. I was so physically and and psychologically ill. I was so confused and hurt. I I searched for help everywhere and Mm -hmm. there was nothing. And no one had answers. I didn't know what this was. Mm -hmm. At the time, I had 22 years of experience in my profession of, of social work. Mm-hmm. So I helped all kinds of people through abuse, mm-hmm. through symptoms, through mental health, domestic violence, sexual assault. I helped millions mm. or thousands. But this was not something anybody talked about. Nobody mm. trained us about this. So mm. I didn't see the signs. Mm. And it wasn't until I hit rock bottom that I realized there was such a thing as workplace bullying. And it mm. was different from mm. the other abuse. So I needed to, I needed to dive in. I needed mm-hmm. to find uh, what this was. I needed to recover. Mm-hmm. And then I needed to start a resource because I worried about the people that didn't have my training. How were they going to survive if I barely made it? Mm-hmm. What about people who don't even speak English as a first language? Mm-hmm. How are they going to survive if I couldn't even, I almost, you know, I just about jumped off that bridge. I, right. I became that hurt from this. Mm-hmm. So I had to start a resource. I knew it wasn't going away. Okay. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you for sharing this. And how is workplace bullying defined? Well, first of all, I want to dispel that myth that it's like childhood bullying. It is not like childhood bullying. Childhood Mm. bullying is primarily physical aggression. Mm. There's some psychological stuff, Mm -hmm. but let's face it. We're adults. We, most of us are educated. We have far more skills. We can be quite sophisticated in how we want to abuse somebody and not get caught. So how is it defined? It is a variety of many different negative behaviors and comments and tactics and whether it's online, in person, nonverbal, very offensive, insulting, humiliating, embarrassing tactics Mm -hmm. that are used often behind closed doors, very insidious. It is, it is, it causes many forms of harm, Mm -hmm. physical and psychological, which I'll Mm -hmm. go into later uh, with you about, Mm -hmm. but it's, 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 it's something that does not happen overnight. Like harassment can be a one-time incident. Yes. But bullying, psychological harassment is never a one-time incident. Right. It's a series of events, usually three months or more. Mm-hmm. Before that three months, we're talking about rudeness, meanness, incivility, abrasiveness, sarcasm, inappropriate jokes and teasing. But after three months and you're that person who's constantly targeted, we're mm-hmm. talking about psychological harassment or psychological correct. violence. Correct. Correct. Well said. And uh, what causes a person to become a bully? I am glad you asked that question because, again, there's a lot of assumptions, a lot of you know, judgments, a lot of myths as well out there that are quite incorrect. I Mm. hear people saying, oh, they're all narcissists. They're all psychopaths. They're all sociopaths. Mm. Well, they're not. You know, the psychopaths, sociopaths, sociopaths, they absolutely exist. And research shows us that's like three, four percent of our population. So Mm -hmm. you can do the math if there's someone in your workplace. But the majority that I see, because I do provide services to those who are accused or substantiated as being a bully, Mm -hmm. and I work with them. And for me, it's an honor because I get to learn why. And I give you a list. Their first job they ever had might have been authoritarian leadership training, and they learned how to dominate and and be you know overbearing and be cutthroat and abrasive and mean and controlling and micromanaging and they thought it was the right thing because they got rewarded for it they got promoted they got bonuses they got hired for it 
So if you keep getting that over, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, Mm -hmm. you're just kind of disconnecting from that moral gauge that we all have that says you can't treat people that way. You Mm -hmm. start to think, hey, this is right. I'm doing Mm -hmm. it right. Mm -hmm. Some people bully because they have abuse in the past that they haven't healed. Mm -hmm. They might have been bullied as a child. Maybe one of their parents was a bully. Mm -hmm. I've met all of them. Mm. You know, maybe they had some other form of abuse. Children who grow up in homes of chaos, like domestic violence, or parents who have mental illness and don't get treatment, or alcoholism or drug addiction, Mm. they do have a higher risk of becoming a bully or bullied or both in the workplace. Wow. Mm. Sometimes uh, people bully because they're overwhelmed and burnt out. They're running on an empty gas tank you know, and they just can't handle. Sometimes they bully because they're like a uh, imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. So they suffer from severe insecurity, but they've got this persona that they've got it all together. Mm-hmm. And in comes mm-hmm. these staff that have all these skills that threaten this person. Mm-hmm. And so they've got to oppress and suppress the skills oh, of that. Oh. Staff, or mm-hmm. They're going to look bad. Right. So there's a variety of things. Sometimes it's, um, you know, other things like they have an addiction and they're, and they're scapegoating their target. They yep. might have having an affair in the workplace. Mm-hmm. So there's all kinds of reasons and many of them can change. Many of them have learned this behavior. It's not hardwired. They can change with appropriate help. Mm-hmm. But again, if we're talking about narcissists, psychopaths, sociopaths, mm-hmm. there's very little hope for changing there narcissists very few are diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder but many are walking around with narcissistic traits so you really need a specialist that knows what they're talking about that knows how to identify this stuff to really help rehabilitate and and provide safety and non-judgmental confidential space for these people to do the changing they need to do correct well said and uh you know for a lot of the young viewers and listeners who will be listening to your a words of wisdom. Is there a certain profile of a bully to watch out for at the workplace? <laughs> well, there's profiles that I can tell you of certain bullies and there's yeah. profiles I can tell you of targets as well. Mm-hmm. So we might want to talk about that. Okay. But first okay. of all, for you young folk out there, uh-huh. trust your gut. If you feel uncomfortable, something's not right, trust it. Right. Trust it. Start documenting right away. Mm. And I say document because document is incredibly important uh someday down the line this might escalate you might want to file a complaint you need evidence and you want to appear credible Mm -hmm. another reason i say document is it's because you need to protect your mental health Mm -hmm. this kind of messes with your brain it kind of messes with you makes you feel a little crazy Mm -hmm. i know that there'll be thousands of people listening that are nodding their head yes it's crazy Mm -hmm. the documentation offers you clarity here it is, May. Something happened to me in January. Mm-hmm. I'm going to forget what that's like because this abuse is very fatiguing. Mm-hmm. If I've documented, then I can go back to January 13th, look through my notes. Somebody's accused me, and this is actually a true story, mm-hmm. of going out and keying their car in the parking lot. Well, I can look at my note and say, hey, June, January 13th, I was off to France. So, no, not possible. So, it gives you clarity. And clarity gives you confidence, which Mm. you're going to need, because this is going to attack your confidence. You're going to get full of self-doubt. So clarity, confidence, which gives you courage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so documentation Mm -hmm. is more than just what we originally thought it was for uh, keeping notes. Correct, correct. Well said. And as far as other characteristics, look for people who are abrasive. Mm. If they're kind of really sarcastic and they say those inappropriate jokes or they're really loud and dominating or maybe they ostracize you and just being around them makes you feel like you're shrinking mm-hmm. you're just not yeah. you don't feel good enough you start to feel not good enough you know something's not right so you might want to do a sanity check check in with somebody who does this kind of work mm-hmm. just a sanity check why not yeah. Just uh, check in with somebody. Hey, am I crazy? Or what do you think of this? You mm-hmm. know, get some support mm-hmm. and uh, keep your confidence up because this will chip mm-hmm. away at you. Like, you know, that that quote, uh, death by a thousand cuts. Mm-hmm. Well, this is what workplace bullying is like. Mm-hmm. I call it psychological injury by a thousand psychological insults. Right. 
So eventually it'll cut away at anyone. Doesn't matter how educated, how smart, how successful, how big and strong, how wonderfully articulate you are. It will happen to anyone. So don't, mm. don't kid yourself. If I hear somebody say, oh, I'll never let some anybody bully me, I go, uh-oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and everything you're saying seems very familiar when I look back in the last four decades of working myself, you know, and I've seen people around uh, exactly the same kind of people you're talking about. But my next question to you, Linda, is that does bullying affect everyone equally or is it different across genders, race, cultures, religions? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So in other words, yeah. <laughs> each case is unique, mm. right? Because every individual is unique. Mm. We all bring our own stories to the table. We all have a history, family history. We might have some previous wounds that we haven't healed. Mm. It depends on how much knowledge do you have on this issue? How much resources do you have support? All of that factors in. It's mm. already multi-layered and complex, mm. this kind of phenomenon. Yeah. But if you add in the fact that maybe English isn't your first language or you're an immigrant or your status, you know, mm. like, that makes you a minority. There's added complexities. Correct. There's added fear, levels of fear, le added levels of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And that's what really scared me is to, when I went through it, whoa, what about those minorities? Mm. Right. You know, I'm a minority because I'm a female. But yeah. what if I was, you know, a person mm. of color or mm. a person who didn't speak English? I would be attacked. I would be in a much more vulnerable position. Mm. So complexities, yes, more and more. Okay. Okay. And uh, is there something where, or let, let me come back, come back. When we talk to the, talk about the Canadian Institute of Workplace Bullying, uh, how do you and your colleagues step in to provide support? Well, it comes in many ways. Sometimes mm -hmm. uh, an employee will just call me directly and I'll do an assessment of, of, of exactly the answer to the question you just asked me. Mm -hmm. What are your resources? What have you done so far? Mm -hmm. What kind of training do you have? And, you know, have you accessed your union? So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do an assessment. It'll be mm -hmm. an individual service. Mm -hmm. Or I'll have employers call me and come in to do an assessment, a consultation. We'll do some coaching, some mentoring for leadership. Mm -hmm. I will train leadership. I will train staff, customize the, the training to the industry. Mm -hmm. So every industry has a little bit of different nuances. If it's nursing or teachers or construction yep. or oil and gas or mm -hmm. primarily men or primarily women. We mm. adjust it to whatever issue is going on there. Mm. So training, consults, individual sessions. Sometimes I have groups come in. Mm. You know, whatever is the need, we, we're doing that. We're trying to fill gaps between systems as well. Okay. You know, when you look at uh, medical systems and unions and human resources and investigations, mm. there's a lot of gaps in information, a lot mm. of errors. We're trying to make some corrections in those gaps as well. And uh, is there any legislation um, to, pre no, to prevent this? And a related question, do companies have policies to mm -hmm. be able to prevent this? Well, I can only speak, for, I can speak about Canada. Mm -hmm. So only recently, for almost a year now, we have had federal legislation mm -hmm. that protects all federally employed em employees, workers. Yeah. yeah. And that protects federal, mm -hmm. right? We also have uh, many of our provinces have policy legislation as well. Mm -hmm. and, and the federal and the provincial legislation indicates that every employer must have policies, mm -hmm. must have a reporting process, mm -hmm. must train their mm -hmm. staff, mm -hmm. must prevent retaliation. Now, a lot of employers are trying to stay under the radar and skip that training, you know, mm -hmm. but eventually mm -hmm. they will get reported and caught. And there's hefty fines for that. Wow. Okay. And uh, I do find in on, on Canada, now that we have legislation, more people are speaking up, more people are filing complaints, and more cases are being won. Mm. And I'm sharing those case laws on social media 
because okay. I want to show people what their mm. rights are and that there's more courage coming forward now. Mm. So I'm not sure about India. I, 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 I assume there isn't, mm-hmm. but I sure hope people will take this up, especially those young ones listening, mm-hmm. because this is your future. And what really motivated me was I don't want my children to go through what I'm going through. Correct. And I sure don't want my grandchildren going through what I'm going through. Mm-hmm. I didn't think in my lifetime that I would see legislation here in Canada, mm-hmm. but we have it. So Fantastic. if we can do it, you mm-hmm. can do it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And you know, uh, I didn't even know that there was legislation. Thank you for telling me that in Canada there is, but I don't know, or I don't know enough about the subject, but I would be surprised if we have something like that in India or in most parts of the developing world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my next question to you is that uh, once we identify who who is the bully and who is the bullied, what is the kind of recourse or treatment available for each of them okay so the way that it works here if Mm -hmm. somebody files a complaint Mm -hmm. they have to do an investigation so you have to have investigators that are trained Mm -hmm. trauma-informed training to Mm -hmm. investigate cases of psychological harassment we're talking about psychological injuries so your Mm -hmm. investigators need to have some background in trauma-informed practices that's probably something that you'll have to you really have to take seriously. And we're, we're certainly trying to make that mandatory here. Mm. And then if the case is substantiated, and even before that, if the person who is being harmed wants help, they just reach out to services that are available. And there's services all around the world now. Mm. So even if they email me, I can find them somebody close okay. to them mm. that could at least provide either coaching, mentoring, mm. Uh, counseling it might be brief counseling maybe Mm. they're traumatized because this is a we call it a trauma betrayal Mm. and it's internal and external systems betrayal Mm. so we you know I do train therapists on how to treat this injury and I hope more and more therapists will want this training but anybody who's suffering an injury should reach out to somebody who knows what they're doing for those who are causing the harm Mm -hmm. Now, you have to hold them accountable. They're not going to come to somebody like me and say, hey, I'm a bully. Could you treat me? Yeah. They're just not going to do it. Mm-hmm. Now, believe it or not, I have had some people say, hey, I think I might be. Could you do? Could you check me out? Well, right away, I'm going to say, well, you're not a true blue bully, but we might have some behaviors, right? So we'll, we'll work together. So I'm mm-hmm. quite proud of them for doing that. Mm-hmm. But true blue bullies, true blue bullies will not come for help. Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll kick and scream. So the employer has to hold them accountable Mm. if the investigation says yep you've done this 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 and it's inappropriate we want to keep you you're skilled but you must change these behaviors you got to go see linda crockett or some of my other colleagues around the world for rehabilitation coaching counseling education Mm. Mm. so they come to see me i get a copy of the investigation i know what this person has done I do my assessment, I work with them, and I really love that part of my job. Mm. I love to see the transformation. Mm. Mm. But again, if it's a narcissist, psychopath, or sociopath, they'll refuse to come and they'll quit the job or they'll get fired. Absolutely. And since you have so very kindly offered to uh, help people out, would you like to share your email? Absolutely. Psychological safety first, all one word, at gmail.com psychological safety first at gmail.com thank you linda so uh, i've got time for two more questions okay uh, my next question to you is how do you differentiate between bullying and harassment like i said earlier harassment can be one incident mm-hmm. it can be as well but harassment tends to follow with what, within what we call protected grounds. Mm. So in our Human Rights Act, we have protected grounds. Mm. And that's, you know, whether your race, your color, ethnicity, your religious beliefs, mm. physical disability, mental disability, marital status, gender status. There's those protected grounds, gender orientation. Right. There's those protected grounds. And harassment usually falls within them. 
Okay. Bullying usually weaves in between them. Okay. So instead of me coming out and cutting and making a racist comment about you, mm. uh, somebody before we had legislation would say, God, I hate your skin, or geez, I hate the sound of your voice, or mm. why are you eating that? And okay. God, you're a waste of space. They could say those things. That's not in the protected grounds. Mm. If you get insults like that every day, eventually it's going to wear on you. So workplace psychological harassment or bullying weaves in between that. And like I said, it's a variety of those tactics over about three months or more mm. with or without intent to cause harm. And it does cause harm, mm. some form of harm. If you want me to tell you a little bit about that harm yeah. physically, you know, the first thing that we all suffer from, and I think mm. as humans, doesn't matter where we are, we're all about the same. We mm. start thinking about our problems in bed at night, right? We start, mm. it's quiet, nobody's disturbing us. So we yeah. start thinking, well, that's the first thing that starts impacting us. We lose our sleep. We can't get to sleep because we're thinking about, oh my God, I can't believe she said that to me today, or I can't believe he did that to yeah. Diddy. Am I imagining mm. things? Like you start, you can't get to sleep. Mm -hmm. Or you wake up at three in the morning and you're doing that. So you're not getting good sleep. Mm -hmm. And research will show us that if you're not getting good sleep, you're insomniac, you mm -hmm. might as well show up to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're going to cause accidents, you're going to cause injuries, You your sleep is vital. So sleep seems to be the first thing to go. Then comes anxiety. Anxiety brings in panic attacks. Mm -hmm. Then you start to isolate, right? Because you're starting to feel vulnerable. Right. You're tired, you're not functioning right, you're making mistakes, you have anxiety, you isolate. And then when you isolate... In comes all the self-doubt, second guessing, and you seek help from other people around you. And they're all mm. putting their head down and say, I'm not getting involved. I'm not getting involved. Mm. Now you feel betrayed by your own colleagues. So your confidence, your focus, your loss of concentration is like a domino, right? You're right. And eventually it leads to depression. It leads to anxiety and panic attacks. And it leads to suicidal ideation. And we know too many mm. that have taken their lives because of bullying and in fact, we also have some premature deaths due to bullying. Mm. And we have some cases that have been proven wow. of cardiac arrest, of a stroke. Um, and that's premature death. And, and right. so this is quite serious and quite harmful. Right. So physically, you're looking at gastrointestinal problems, cardiac problems, uh, migraines, fatigue, your immune system is being mm. attacked. So you're coming, you're getting flus and colds mm. and there's just a whole array of physical and psychological harm. Mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with PTSD back in 2010, mm -hmm. and that was kind of rare then mm -hmm. for workplace bullying. Today, I'm seeing lots of cases of PTSD related to workplace bullying, mm -hmm. but I hope that I can be an inspiration to anybody listening that mm -hmm. you can recover. Wow. You need to make your recovery yeah. a priority you need to feel that you're worth it. Mm. Otherwise, who's bullying who there? You have to get, recovery has to be a priority with or without justice. Well said, well said. And Linda, my last question to you, and this is for the many, many people who will listen to this amazing conversation. Based on this vast experience you have of bullying, what would be three lessons you would want our viewers and listeners to take away from our conversation? Well, I've kind of covered them, like mm -hmm. recovery being a priority with or without justice. You sure. have to feel you're worth it. Mm -hmm. I have people coming in 10 years, they haven't seen the bully, but they're talking like the bully was sitting right beside them on the couch. Mm -hmm. Again, who's bullying who now? You mm -hmm. have to take responsibility for your recovery. Mm -hmm. No, it's not fair, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Secondly, <clears throat> get as much knowledge as you can. Read your policies, read research. Mm. Don't go on the myths and the assumptions. Read the research. I've got tons of material available to anyone yeah. for free on my website where you can. Re I've got hundreds of research papers, books recommended, videos. Mm. I've got people sharing their stories on videos. So, information is knowledge is power. You've yeah. heard that many times. So, yeah. become informed. That is so important. Correct. And uh, yeah, I think I've covered them. So, no, you have. Get some help, have. Learn what you can talk about it don't isolate you're feeding the bullies and the harassers if you isolate you mm. are feeding them amazing resist it mm. and get some help amazing 
Linda, on that note, uh, and your amazing words of wisdom now, you're worth it. Take responsibility for your recovery. Read the research. Knowledge is power. Talk about the, the challenges that you have. Thank you so much for speaking to me and talking to me about the Canadian Institute of Workplace Bullying Resources. Thank you for taking us through so many different aspects of bullying that I certainly have learned a lot about in our conversation today, and I'm sure our viewers and listeners will uh, remember your email ID and reach out to you. And thank you for the amazing work that you're doing. And finally, thank you for speaking to me. Good luck. Thank you for having me. I'm, I very much appreciate getting this message out. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.